Hey there folks, Ennui Goblin here once again. So I have not done one of these in, pretty much since I began this channel. So I think it's a past due time that I try and do another one of my Battleground series. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with these series, essentially it's just me playing through some of my random ranked games. And instead of me, you know, doing commentation on a replay of some of the higher levels, it's really just more of uh, my commentary as I play through my own games. Kind of giving you sort of like a play-by-play -play of like what's going through my mind, some of the, some of the strategies that I'm going to be working through. Um, so I'm starting out on this map, what's it called here? Cash by Sin Company, all right, or Psy Company, I guess is his name. Uh, this is a pretty standard map. It's zero credits to start, 100 credits per base per turn. Uh, I'm playing as the second player against my opponent, Extermer, ranked at, oh, uh, ranked at 930, 1936. Okay, good. So that's, this should be actually at least a challenging game as opposed to make somebody at like 1750 or 1800 where I wouldn't be as much of a difficulty. I was at like... Before I took my hiatus, I was at like 1950, 1960. I was on the doorstep of 2000 and then all that nonsense happened that I had to take a break from the game. And when I took a break from the game, I, I surrendered from, uh, I think I must have surrendered at least 10, 15 games. So I went down almost, I went down a solid 100, 150 points. I kind of, I worked it back up to about 1859. I went from like 1950. 1960 to 1800 in the course of like a day over after I just sacrificed all those after I surrendered all those games and just said all right I gotta take care of those things and I'll come back so I've, I've been slowly kind of working my score back up uh to the point I didn't I wanted to do this series where my score was high enough that I would get decent opponents to play against so here we are um, this map, I like this map, uh, the forest on the outside are gonna work really well for me playing as the Crawlian. I've been playing almost exclusively as Crawlian lately too, I've got to say. I used to be, a, when I first started playing this game, I was really heavy on, on, uh, Sapien play, but I've kind of been transitioning a lot more to Crawlians. I think the way that the Crawlian race, you know, the, the, the speed and, uh, low cost unit uh, floods, they, they really work more to the way I like to play this game. So, um, my opponent, he had zero to start since I took second turn, I get 200 to start. So I'll get an early build. Um, obviously he's got to move, be moved. He's certainly, he moved one of his Marines up to this base already. I'm wondering, he had a Marine here and a Marine here already. So I'm wondering if he, maybe he put his Marine up in this position or a Marine up in that position. No, oh wait, no, he can't because uh, this this base is going to block him, I think, from getting up. Nope. Uh, what's the Marine? I think the Marines have nine. So yeah, I guess he could be up in one of these trees up here getting ready to try and get sight on my position. Maybe get a jump, have a defensive bonus, and then his other Marine is going to be up here capturing the base. So let's start. It's pr Obviously, i got to capture this base up front if I want to get my 300 next turn. So we'll take it. I, I'm going to start on the left side. All right, cool. It looks like I guessed correctly because he, he brought his up to, he brought his other Marine up on the left side. So, question is, what do I want to do with this? I guess, I'll, I guess this would be the best spot to keep him. That way I have control of this portion of the board. Um, I can't, and this guy, he can't come up here or maybe threaten a base, but it's really easy for me to just cap these bases with new units. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, so the question now is, do I want to go double underling or do I want to go a single underling and then have 400 next turn and be able to go with swarmer and underling on the next turn? Um, I think I'm going to go double underling so that I can get some more board control early on in this game. And then the next turn when I have 300, I'm going to go for, uh, a swarmer. I'm expecting he'll have 300. He'll probably bring a marauder out, probably on this side, so that he can kind of bring it, so he can threaten more base possibility, base capture uh, pressure with the marauder coming up on, putting pressure on my underlings here, and then bringing this guy up to uh, this forest unit here will be kind of difficult. But I have enough underlings to deal with any advancement from this marine, so I'm not too worried about it. And then the swarmer should be able to deal with that marauder coming up on the end. So I think that'll work out pretty well for me. Um, I do have to be careful with the Swarmer that these two guys, that this Marine doesn't get a good shot against it. But I think I can use these underlings, these three underlings really well to kind of contain any aggression he's going to bring off on that left side. So we'll see what happens on the next turn. Okay, so let's take a look at his motion real quick. He brings a Marine up on the center base. The second Marine is going to come out and then, yeah, he pushes that other Marine up to that forest position. So now I'm at 300 credits here. 
Um, and he's going to try and bring the pressure up on the, the left side here first, because this Marine's got control uh, on this portion. And then he he's basically going to try and swing the, the pressure left, and then if I'm able to defuse the left pressure, he'll be able to transition into right pressure. So i got to be careful of that. But I can get an even exchange from here with this with this uh, underling and then get this underling onto this position and get the gang up bonus and I, I don't know if that's going to be enough to take him out and I don't want to have to involve this underling here so let's 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 take a look I'll give it a shot I'm going to do the five shot here bring in that underling yes and I can take him out perfect okay awesome so uh, it looks like he might be able to eliminate that underling next turn but I can afford to lose it and what I can do now is I can safely bring my Swarmer up on this position, and he can't get to it with any of these Marines. So, it looks like, I was, I'm surprised he didn't go for a Marauder. I can see why he didn't. I mean, there is more power for, the Marines do have a lot of power because there's so much uh, forest spots for them to land on. Um, and I, he would expect me to go anti-air, so I do see the, the value of going heavy Marines. But a marauder would actually a marauder here would actually probably be more troublesome for me because it can zip around and do a lot of problems. This swarmer is going to be uh, really instrumental in, in dictating the pace of the next couple of turns. So the question is, how much damage can I get on him right now? No, it's not worth it because I don't want to do a four for a six exchange on this position where then he can eliminate this. If I put the underling up into this position, and then you can just eliminate it with this guy possibly next turn. Um. Next turn, I can bring a Garuda out, or I could go Swarmer with Underling, which is probably... I'll probably go Swarmer Underling next turn. If he brings out a Marauder on the next turn, then I might bring out a Garuda to counter, but I'll probably just go Swarmer Underling and have a nice line that the Swarmers can hide behind from and, and attack. So, you know... Can he even go... I guess he can attack from that position. I'm wondering if I can put him here. He's going to try and... I'm going to put my underling up here and guard that central base. I don't want him to do any kind of weird base capture nonsense. His defensive bonus isn't quite as on the forest. Um, let's take a look here. I mean... It's a plus two versus a plus three. It's not that big a deal. And the, 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 the advantage of really putting him here is that I can't leave him on the forest. And yeah, he does have a plus three defensive. But this Marine here, this Marine here can still attack him from the other forest tile and still have the same. So it's a plus three defensive versus another plus three defensive. And they'll do an even five exchange like I just did here. So by putting him on this base, I get the double bonus of protecting my central base from this potential base capture from this Marine. And the only way for him to attack this position now is to attack it from the planes here, which has zero defensive bonus. So I'm going from a five ex from a five to five exchange to a six to four exchange in my favor by putting him on this base. So it's exactly where I want him. Then next turn I can bring a swarmer maybe on this base position, or I could push forward with my my underling line here, and then have another swarmer and use the swarm to attack this marine after it's weakened from trying to take this shot. So oh, and it looks like next turn he just might not be able to. I, I don't think he'll be able to kill off this underling turn, which means that'll work out really well for me. So uh, and I think I've got. The credit advantage from that kill? Yeah, I do. So he's already lagging a little bit behind. So hopefully I can keep that advantage. And if I can, if I can widen that gap again next turn, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so let's take a look at what he did here. So he's going to move that Marine up. Take a four shot at me. So he's going for the 4-6 exchange, which means he's definitely bringing a Marauder out. And then a 4-5. And then, boom, out comes the Marauder. So... This, this makes it a little bit more complicated. I can probably deal with this. It's just, oh, man, if I had one more underling, or maybe if, the, if if this underling was even just another health unit up, this would make it a little easier. But uh, let's see here. What I'd love to be able to do is take a shot at this Marauder now while it's on top of the base so that I can take advantage of the fact that it's got a neg one to its defense. Um, But... I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about what this Marauder can do because it can eliminate any of my underlings on the board right now. So essentially, he's gonna 
probably delay me. I don't think I'm going to be able to bring a Swarmer out safely this turn while that Marauder's in the center. Um, let's see. Is there any use in keeping the one health and sacrificing him in order to maintain a position? I don't know. You know what I think? I'm going to take the Swarmer out here. I'm going to take my five shot on uh, this Marine right here. Hmm. How much damage can this six marine do? This six ling do. I actually kind of like that better. I was going to take this six ling and use it to eliminate this marine here. But what I actually might like better is I bring the six ling over here. And reduce him to a three reduce him to a one health. Take this ling becomes a four ling at this position. Bring the five ling over here. Eliminate the one marine over here. This marauder will then move up and attack the five marine and then get a shot at my uh Actually no 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 no. I should bring the five marine over here. Sorry, the five underling over here. Do the exchange with that marine, get it at a one health, eliminate it here, and the reason I want to do that. And now I'll use a six wing here because there's no damage bonus. And the reason I want to do that is because the odds are on the next turn when this Marauder comes up to attack my six Marine, I got a better shot at getting a two shot in the exchange. And that's going to put the Marauder at just enough health that when it moves up to attack my Swarmer, it won't be as damaging. Mm. I'm going to move him back here and heal him up. Yeah, maybe I can bury him a little later or something. But right now I'm going to move him back out of harm's way where he can heal up a little bit. Then, uh... Do I want to bring out a second Swarmer? Might not be a bad idea. I could go Swarmer. I could, I could go a Swarmer on this base. And then an, an Underling on this base wouldn't be too bad an option. You can only take out one of my Underlings right now. So... The question is, do I want to go... Either I go for... I have three real options. I can go for a Swarmer on this base, an Underling on this base. I could go for an Underling on all three bases. Or I could go for just a single Garuda. I think the Garuda is the worst option right now. It can do a lot of damage, but I'd rather have more units than a single powerful unit. Um, having the three Underlings. The other thing is, he's, he bought two Marines... How much has he spent here? All right. He's bought two Marines and a uh, Marauder. That puts him at 650 total spent. We're on round three now, which means that he's made 600. Well, he should be at 150 in reserve, which means next turn he's going to have 450. So I don't think he's going to have enough for the tank, for the Copter next turn, which is what I'm really afraid of. If he brings out a Copter next turn and he catches my Swarmer's he catches me with a bunch of underlings and nothing to defend against air. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So I got to be careful that he doesn't bring out a copter. I don't think he has enough. I think he's got he's got 150 in reserve right now. And next turn he'll have 450. So he won't be able to bring out the copter. Which means that I could safely do all three underlings if I wanted to. But. Honestly I think I'd rather have the swarmer. And the underling. And now even if he does some, some kind of nonsense where he tries to bring this Marine up and do a base capture, this Marine is no longer a threat. He's either going to back it up or it's just going to use it as a placeholder. But this Marine can't do anything anymore. Um, what his Marauder can do is he, he'll be able to eliminate this Ling now and then take a shot at one of my Swarmers. But he's going to lose a lot of Marauder health in that process. He'll lose at least a one health on it. So it'll be a nine when it attacks one of these Swarmers to get maybe a Two, a, a two or three shot on one of my swarmers here and the swarmers will get a four shot in exchange on the marauder and the marauder will go down the turn afterwards so i think i got him in a pretty good position i got a lot of units still left up on the board i'm at a 200 credit advantage he'll pull that up to he'll pull it up to 2-1 on his turn next on round four but when all is said and done uh i think 
I think I'm going to have the winning advantage. I think I've definitely got the winning position here. And then maybe in a turn or two after I consolidate my troops, after this Marauder has done its thing, I can make my push forward. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I might want to consider bringing out, not next round, but round five, I might want to consider bringing out a Garuda. I'm very worried about him saving up to that helicopter. And I want to have something to deal with that cop in case. Um, I mean, I could... I don't think I'm going to be bringing a worm out anytime soon on a map with this low credit count, but he's not going to be doing... The worst thing he could do is bring out a Cotter, and i got to have something to do with that just in case. But for now, I've definitely got brown con, uh, ground and board control, so we should be good with this. We'll see how it goes next turn. All right, so we're on round four. Let's, let's watch his moves first. He's going to pull that Marino out of the way. I can still get at it if I want to. He's going to go for the six shot, and is he going to go for that three underling, or is he going to pull it back? He's going to pull it back, and... All right, Marauder. So he went for double Marauders here. Um, I'm surprised. I mean, I can see why he would want to go for Marauders, because I do have a couple underlings, but now that those Swarmers are on the board, I think a much better choice for him would have been to go with more Marines and then Marauders, because... Uh, I think I can tear through those pretty quickly with these swarmers. So I'm going to get a four shot here, and then a four shot here. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out my attack order. I think if I get the four shot here, and I can do three with this uh, underling, which will get pushed up to a four shot. So I got a couple options here. I can go four shot with the swarmer. Then a second four shot with the swarm, bring this down to a two, and then eliminate it with the ten. But what I could also do, four shot with the uh, swarmer, then it should be like a four or five attack with the gang up bonus uh, with the underling next. So we'll, let's let's start with the four shot here because this is the obvious attack. I want to hit it while it's still got the the, the defensive bonus. So now it's down to the six. And what kind of attack do I get on it now? Now I get a four. Can I get a two with him, maybe? Maybe. Uh, maybe if I attack him right here and then I bring my three up here, I can get two, and that would be just enough to take him out. So I think I'll actually do this. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to take my underling here, and I'm going to attack with the four shot on the marauder here. And I want to attack from that position so that I can bring my three out, my three underling out, attack from this spot, and get the gang up bonus. Should push it up to just enough to get that Marauder down on one turn. That leaves this Swarmer free to come out here and take a four shot on this Marauder, weaken it very significantly. And now he's got nothing to retaliate with, as opposed to if I shot, put everything up against this 1-6 and he still has a 9 Marauder in the back to, you know, kind of clean up with. So let's do that. My four shot here. Bringing him down to a two, and do I get the two? No. Ah, darn. So close. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. Damn. I was really hoping that would work. Um. So I'm going to break a cardinal rule. I could go and... Well, usually what you want to do... Like, like I said, the rule that the general rule of thumb you want to go through is it's always better to kill a unit than to weaken a unit. But I think what I'd like to do is instead of using this Swarmer to do the final four shot on that and kill this Marauder in the back, I would rather bring him out here and maybe do a four shot, a three shot on this this Marauder and bring it down to a six health. The only thing that I'm concerned about is that he could bring an Engineer up here and then heal this one back up real quick. But by then, I'm going to have another Swarmer up on the board and I can eliminate the any Engineer. So I think I can deal with any threat he comes up with. And I'd rather weaken this Marauder and have two weak Marauders than kill this Marauder right away and have a, a dead Marauder and a nine health Marauder, which can... So I think I'm, I th I'd rather cripple him than eliminate one of his Marauders at this point. And then I can bring this three up here and eliminate that Marine in the back. So I think that works out pretty well. So we're going to do that. Take my three shot. Take my one shot. 
Uh, and I mean, I've, I'm, if I weren't ahead, I wouldn't do that, but I'm already 200 ahead in credit kill counts. You can see right here, I got the 300 to 100, so I'm pretty comfortable with my position. And now I can bring out another Swarmer up here, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble next turn. And uh, so let's repair him for now. And uh, next turn, I'll probably bring out two more underlings so that they can start making their push for the captures on these three bases up here. All right, so uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of options. He'll probably either bring out more Marines. Maybe he might think an Engineer will help him heal up Marauders real quickly, but I don't think an Engineer is a good choice when I got the three Swarmers up on the board. So he'll probably go, I would assume he would go Marines. Maybe Marauder Marine if he's got the credits, but I he doesn't have, he, he was trying to save up for the helicopter, I think, and then realized that he doesn't have the time to to dawdle about and wait for a helicopter to come up on the board, and now he put out a Marauder, so he won't be able to get the helicopter next turn. So I think we should be good to go. Maybe he does get a helicopter. He, what, what did I say is, he have 450, so with the 250 from the Marine, actually, that leaves him with 200, so he might just have just enough for a helicopter next turn. But that's okay because I'll distract him by using one of these. I can just use my underlings to make base captures against wherever he's going to go. And then his helicopter is going to have to waste its turn attacking one of my uh, underlings capturing the base. So that should work out pretty nicely. Even if he brings a helicopter out, I think I can deal with it. And then I'll have enough next turn to get a Garuda. And the, with the Garuda with the three swarmers... Should be enough to take out any helicopter he puts up on the board. Especially if it can't, if the helicopter can't come out swimming right away because it's got to defend its bases. Alright, so I'll, we'll see what happens next turn. Alright, so we're on round five. He's gonna bring that first marauder up, eliminate that three lindling, uh, do a four shot, and then that underling is probably gonna get killed. Is that, is the two shot enough to do it? The two marauder? No, but it can get a second shot, and then it can't kill it. Okay. So both my links are going to go down, and then up comes the helicopter, like I said it would. All right. So, um, I mean, there's a couple of ways to approach it. I think the best way to approach it is to use my swarmers and eliminate the marauders now. So, I mean, he'll have the advantage of having... The copter will be a little tough for me to kill, and he can get a six shot off of one of my swarmers. But now he's back at zero credits. So next turn, he'll probably bring a Marauder out next turn, maybe three Marines, which could be a problem. Hmm. That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about, so I could use these guys to kind of whittle down this Copter, which I think is a bad idea. I could, I could get the Copter down to probably like a six health, maybe a five health if I was really lucky. I think only a six health. What I could also do, what I, what I probably should do is I'll just use my Swarmers, kind of back them up. Get rid of these two marauders here, and uh, I can build. Uh, I'd like to build some underlings right now, because I'm I'm expecting he'll most likely build three more marines next turn, and that's going to be dangerous if I have a lot of air force with no underlings to back them up, and a helicopter up on the board. Hmm. What I could, oh actually here's here's what I should do so I should get the swarmers first I should get the swarmers to kill these mar these marauders first back them up a little bit build a Garuda like right here on this base then next turn he'll build the marines then maybe get a six shot off of one of my swarmers then I can use the swarmers and the Garuda to bring this copter down I don't think I'll be able to eliminate the copter next turn but I can probably get down to like a three maybe even like anywhere between a two and a four health depending on the rolls I get. Um, and if the damage rolls are good, I could get a two health, get that copter down to two health. That'd be amazing. But I can work with a three health, even a four health on it at the end of next turn. Then he'll have three Marines and a four health copter, and I'll pump three new underlings onto all three of my bases. And that way I will still be up in material. And I think the underlings can push away the Marines. I can deal with the remainder of the copter. So I... I think as long as I get these two Marauders down next turn, he's going to be down far enough that on turn six, he won't be able to deal with my material anymore, even with the Copter. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. So we're going to go with that. So let's see here. Pull him back. Get a uh, three shot. 
I'm going to keep this one here. That Marauder goes down. I'm going to pull this one back. That Marauder goes down. And so do I want to have... I'm going to keep my Garuda back behind the Swarmers. Now, typically, you'd like to put the Garuda out in front and the Swarmers hiding out behind it. But the reason I want to keep my Garuda in the back is I don't want the Copter to get its preliminary shot. I'd rather the Copter bring down one of my Swarmers to a 6 health and whittle this down to a 9. That way, I can use my Swarmers to whittle it down and I can use my Garuda will be more powerful in finishing off what's left of the Copter if the Copter is weakened initially as opposed to the Copter getting a getting the first shot as a 10 health against my Garuda. So I'm keeping my Garuda in the back so that when I attack the Copter, I can use the... I can, the Copter's not going to be able to hit it right away. And so when I go and make my attack against the Copter, the Garuda will be still full health and the Copter will be whittled down. And that's going to be a more effective attack in the end. So we'll... That's turn four. Um, I've got the 500 credit advantage on him. Uh, I, I like my position. I think even if he pumps out those Marines, once I bring the underlings out, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, so let's take a look at round six here. Helicopter goes up. Pops open up. Yeah, so, so he's going to pop the center one with that six shot. And then one, two. Is he going for a third? No, just the two. Okay. So he's going for the two Marines. He's not going to bring out a third. He's going to save that hundred. So that's kind of strange, though. I mean... Why would he want to save 100? I understand if he wanted to only bring out one Marine and save 200 so that next turn he could bring out another helicopter. But with the two, he's only going to have 400 credits next turn. I mean, I, he's not going to bring out a tank. That would make no sense. These, the tank's got no purpose. Maybe he wants to go Marauder Marine, but then he would just bring out the Marine this turn. So I think I think that might have been a mistake to bring out only two Marines. Either you bring out one or you bring out three. doesn't make sense to bring out only two. Works out for me, though. Um... So I got the option, I can I can take out m the Marines, or I can take out the Helicopter. I think taking out the Copter is the better choice. The Marines can do a lot of damage to my Swarmers, but if I take out the Helicopter, I chop his legs out, and then I can bring out my Underlings, and even with the two Marines, to kind of counter the air I have, with once I bring out my Underlings, he's going to be pretty overwhelmed. And since he can't bring out a Helicopter next turn, I can swarm with Underlings, because he won't have any Air Force next turn to, to counter it, and then by the time he does bring out a helicopter, I can bring out new air units to counter that. So I think I think this will work out pretty well for me. So let's snipe the helicopter away. Um, damn. All, the other problem that I'm, I'm thinking about, concerned about, is if I bring out my uh, swarmers to hit the helicopters, these uh, two marines here are going to be able to sit from their base and attack, and they're going to get an attack bonus on top of my uh, my... Swarmers. So instead of getting like four shots, they're gonna be able to get possibly uh, five shots, six shots. Depends. Okay. Well, I gotta do it. I gotta get rid of that helicopter now. And now here, and can I bring this one here? I don't want to bring. I don't want to bring this swarmer to this spot to attack the helicopter, or to this spot to attack the helicopter, because then this marine can just move on to the force tiles. And they'll get an even bigger defensive bonus. And I, that's that's the one thing I really don't want, is I don't want to get hit by these Marines on any of these forest tiles. That'll be a big problem for me. So let's let's bring him here and attack from this position. Get a two-shot. Then I'll bring him to this position. Get a second two-shot. And then I'll finish him off with the Garuda. All right, great. And can either of them attack? No, neither of them can get to this force swarm in the back, which means that I can get a repair off now. I'll take a, a second repair on my underling. So the question is, how many how many uh, how many lings do I want to bring out? Do I want to bring out two or three? Two would only bring me at four hundred credits next turn, which means I could bring out a Garuda. But I'm not going to need the Garuda because he can't afford a helicopter. So I think I think the best thing to do is to go one, two, three, three underlings. Next turn, I'll have enough for a Swarmer if I need to reinforce my air support because he'll probably he'll probably take out try and take out if not the Swarmers. I don't think he can go he, sweet, so he'll probably go for the Garuda because this Marine in the back can't get to either of these two Swarmers. So the only way he can hit these two Swarmers is with that one Marine. So what he'll probably do is one shot, two shot, get the gang up, probably move him up here and attack from there. I might lose most of the Garuda. He might even go down next turn. Doubtful though, I think the Garuda is pretty well. Uh, I think it's 
it's not as easy for the Marines to hit a Garuda as it is for them to hit a Swarmer. They don't do as much damage. So I think I'm in a really good position. In the meantime, I can use these three underlings to really deal with these Marines, any ground troops that he brings up, and put a lot of... I'm going to use especially this one, but also this one, and, and uh, I'm going to use these two particularly to put a ton of pressure on this base and this base. So he can't really move from this. He, he's got to really keep these bases very well. This base and... Whoa. Yikes. This base... And this base has to be very well protected from by him for the remainder of this game because these two underlings right here are going to put a lot of pressure on those two positions. All right, so we'll see what he does on his next turn. All right, so we're on round seven. And this is like exactly what I said he was going to do. He's going to bring swing that first Marine up to the forest and get the gang up bonus and do uh, six total damage. Sorry, eight total damage to my uh, Garuda. Or is it, did he do six or eight? No, he did six because the Garuda was at eight. And then brings on two more Marines onto the board. And uh, at this point, he's obviously he's not going to go Copter. He's going to go for a Marine heavy play because that's the only thing that he's really got to kind of counter my air force up on the board. Uh, and the reason he didn't go for his third Marine this turn on this board is because he had to keep that Marine uh, placed on this city if you wanted to get the full gang up the full plus three gang up bonus on my Garuda But he wasn't able to eliminate it Which is gonna work out great for me because then I can just take this Garuda and after I eliminate one of these Marines I can bring it back to one of these squares or one of these squares and heal him up real quick He's got the plus two healing so this Garuda will be back in action really fast in like maybe two or three rounds um, So I think the best thing to do is I'm gonna use these two swarmers here to eliminate this marine on the central base, and then once he's once this marine is gone, I can use this uh, this underling to move up and do a base capture on uh, that central base, and then it forces his hand to use one of these two marines to instead of using them against my swarmers where they might be a little bit more effective, they're basically going to be forced to waste their turn and their health eliminating my uh, underling that's capturing the base in order to keep the, himself in the game. Um, so let's start with that. I'm going to bring this swarm right here and get my first five shot on that central base. And actually, can I, can I use my five swarmer to kill him? I can. This is fantastic. So the advantage here is instead of using my 10 swarmer to eliminate this two marine, because a 10 swarmer can do five damage. So I'm losing three potential damage by wasting his shot on that central marine. But now that my five marine, my five swarmer is able to finish off the central marine, I can use this 10 swarmer to go and take out one of these two marines over here instead. Which, uh, that's much, much more effective. So let's do that. Um, I'll eliminate him now. Do I want to attack him from that base? Yeah, I want to attack him from that space. Now this guy is gone. Now I can use my uh, center underling to do the base capture. <clears throat> and now he has no choice but to use these two marines to eliminate this uh, underling up in the center. And actually, can I block it this turn? I just might be able to. And get one off of him. Another four. Hmm, I'm just trying to think strategically here. How much am I ahead? Oh, I've got I've got quite a bit of an advantage. I got an 1100 credit advantage. So I'm just trying to think what I'd like to do is make it so that it's impossible for him to prevent this base capture. If I can get this base capture now, this game is clearly over. It's already heavily in my advantage, but I can I can finish this game pretty quickly if I can get this base this turn. What I can do is there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can get five here, and I can eliminate, sweet, I think I can eliminate this unit this turn, possibly. No, because he only does four. So I don't think I can eliminate this unit, but I can reduce him to a one health, and that's going to make him impossible for him to do any real damage against my uh, underling up on the center. And then, how much damage can I do on this seven marine? Three... Oh, I don't want to do that. Three, and then another one. Hmm. I get the repair off of here. 
this is perfect. So instead of, the reason I just did a repair here is this Garuda, instead of bringing him back to one of these squares and repairing him, I want to repair him right away. I've got him at a four health and it's very unlikely that either of these Marines are going to be able to eliminate him. And if you see, he's blocking this seven Marine from getting the shot up on uh, this underling here. So now I can bring my Swarmer and uh, I can... I'll attack this Marine here. Then I'll bring my other underling and do a five shot on him. And now this Marine here is at a one health, so he can't do any damage to my my underlings in the center. This one health Marine can't do anything. He's, no, uh, he's effectively completely nulled of all possible damage he can do. This Marine isn't able to get to my underling in the center because the Garuda and the Swarmer are both blocking him. And this Marine also can't get it. And so... Neither of these Marines can kill off the Garuda, which means that neither of these Marines are going to be able to get to my Underling, which means my Underling is now fully capable of capturing this base, and there's nothing he can do to prevent the base capture. And then let's take it a step further, do four more points of damage, and then can I kill him this turn? No, I can almost kill him this turn. And that's, that's pretty much a GG right there, I'd have to say. Um, he might want to just draw it out to the end, but I don't see anything he can do at this point. Especially after losing this base, he's he's completely taken away his ability to retaliate with anything. Because now he's just lost too much income, now he's only brought at 200 credits per turn, and it's just not going to be possible for him to retaliate with enough forces. So I think I, I've got this game wrapped up at this point. Let's seal the deal and just get more underlings up on the board, because he can't bring any Air Force, and at this point, this should be enough to overwhelm him. Alright, so... I think that's GG, but I'll let him play it out if he wants to. All right, so round eight. He's going to take a five shot against that Swarmer. Move away the Marine from danger and bring out a helicopter. And then heal him up. Um, okay, so I didn't think he had enough for a helicopter. I guess he really been doing some... He, he must have had an extra hundred credits that I hadn't accounted for. That complicates it a little bit, but it's really not anything I can handle because my, my credit advantage and the number of units I have on the board should be enough. Uh, especially now that I got the 400, I can just bring out a Garuda, and a Garuda will be a, a very simple a very simple counter against this copter. So let's see, how do I want to handle this? So the, the thing I'm worried about is that this copter can come up and sweep away some of my air units. However... And I, I mean, the other thing that's worrisome is that I can't really counter it with any of my underlings because my underlings don't do any air damage. However, there's another way to deal with this that doesn't that involves that doesn't really involve me attacking the copter directly, and that's clearing out these two marines and bringing in one of these underlings to a capture. And then the only recourse he has is to use the helicopter to go after the underling that's capturing his left base. And then that, if, that that makes it so that the copter can't really do any damage, and it'll give me just enough time that I... It'll give me the round or two I need to deal with this copter, and then I'll, I'll be able to take out the last base. So let's see. Mm, how do I want to do it? There, I should... I'll just clear this Marine out with a Swarmer. Bring this Swarmer back. Wait... Where can I move? Where can I attack from with this? Uh, actually, I'll bring this swarmer up into this position. And the reason I did that is I don't want to. I don't want to bring him back because if I had, then this this uh, swarmer wouldn't have had any position to attack from other than my base. And I want to leave the base open because I'm going to bring out a unit on it this turn. All right. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, I'll attack. With this swarmer, actually, better. This is better because I want to use this swarmer to finish off this marine in the back here, so that he can't get a chance to heal. Because I don't want this, I don't want this uh, marine out in the back here healing at all. So I'll use my swarmer to finish off this marine here. Then I've got a three underling, which is just enough to eliminate this marine on that base. Now I can use. Can I bring that ten health? No, ten one can't get there yet. But I can bring this seven. Health uh, underling capture the base, and can the helicopter kill it? No, the helicopter can't even reach that space. That's another unpreventable base capture. Um, and then it seems kind of counterintuitive, but what I'd like to do is bring this underling here, 
And uh, this copter will be able to kill it, but he won't be able to do any... But the reason I do that is I bring this other underling here. And now, this copter can't attack anything I bring out on this base. Uh, and this copter has been kind of quarantined for the rest of the map. I've got the other base catcher there. I'll bring this underling up here just in case. This underling up here, just to completely surround this copter. Then bring out another Garuda. I'll repair this other Garuda, and that should be enough. Now I have enough to deal with this copter next turn. This copter really doesn't have anywhere to go. All of these three units, all of my uh, flying units, will be able to deal with the copter. The copter will take a six shot at that five health. At, the copter here will take a shot at this swarmer and eliminate it, but it'll also lose a health in the process, and that should be just enough damage that I need to eliminate the copter totally uh, on turn nine. Okay. And that's going to be a GG. Okay. Um, you know, just a couple of final thoughts on this game. Extermer, he, he went for really early aggression, and I think that's what killed him in the end. And I can understand, he, he really tried to attack me with his marines really quickly on the uh, top left side around this area. And I think that's where it went wrong because it, it allowed, he kind of tried to probe me with his marines too early, and I got a chance to get an early marine kill. And especially on small maps like this, tiny, even even the smallest of credit advantages can snowball really, really quickly, as you can see. I went from like a 100 credit advance to a 300 credit advance to like a 400 credit advance and suddenly to like an 1100 credit advance. And so that's the nature of this game. You can't let advantages like that snowball. And so also, the other big mistake I think that I was able to capitalize on was when he, I think it was like on turn six, turn five, he had the option to either build three Marines on all bases um, after he built his helicopter, and instead he went for two Marines, and uh, then the turn after was another Marine, and then finally a helicopter. Um, that didn't really make a lot of sense. I think. If he had gone for three Marines, I wouldn't have been able to capture this center base quite so easily. It would have at least taken me another turn. He would have had a helicopter, I mean, or he could have gone one Marine and had a helicopter the next turn after that. And if this helicopter came out a turn earlier, it would have been a lot more difficult for me to get around a, a seven health underling up on this base. So just little things like that, especially when you're already at a disadvantages, can really snowball and just explode up in your face. That being said, Extermer did a really good job, you know, trying his best to defend me. He went for an aggressive strategy in the early game, and it just didn't pay out for him. That happens. Trust me, it's happened to me so many times. Um, so I guess that's it for this. Thanks for watching my Battleground series, guys. Uh, if you have any other suggestions or anybody else wants to play a game that would like to be featured, let me know. Be sure to catch uh, Phobos versus Needle. It's the May Championship. The next round, uh, I already posted up the first game. The next game for that series will be posted up later up this week. Be sure to subscribe, leave any comments, or hit the like button, and uh, I'll see you guys. This is Omni Goblin signing out.